In this project, we're building a fully serverless SSH key generation service on Azure. The user submit requests through an HTTP API. The requests are queued on an Azure service bus, then processed asynchronously by Azure Functions. The resulting SSH key pairs are stored and retrieved from Cosmos DB, all without managing any servers. To make this easy to test, we also deploy a simple static web application hosted in an Azure storage account. This front end calls our Azure Function endpoints directly, letting us submit key generation requests and watch the results come back in real time. At the core of the system is an Azure Service Bus queue. Every incoming request is placed on this queue and assigned a unique request ID, which lets us track the job as it moves through the system. The queue triggered function KeyGenWorker listens for new messages on the service bus. When a request arrives, Azure automatically invokes this function to generate the SSH key pair. Once the key is generated, the results are written to our Cosmos DB instance and then indexed by request ID. In our table, we store the key metadata, the public and private keys in code in Base64. We also use TTL to automatically expire the request after one hour. Our service exposes two HTTP endpoints through Azure Functions. The first one is the key gen post. We use this to submit a new key generation request. The second one is key gen get. This allows us to retrieve the results from our Cosmos DB table. The flow for our service looks like this. First, the user submits a request to the API. That request is queued under the service bus. This triggers an Azure function to run to generate the key pair. It generates the key pair and puts the results in the Cosmos DB table indexed by request ID. You can then call the get API to retrieve the results from the Cosmos DB table by request ID. For testing, we host a small static website in our Azure storage account. The web page is intentionally minimal. We choose a key type and submit a request. Now let's cover the prerequisites for this project. If this is your first time watching one of our videos, you might want to start with the Azure and Terraform Easy Setup video. I'll put a link at the top. That walks you through how you create a build identity in the Azure console and extract out the four environment variables you'll need to set for all the builds. So for this build, what you'll need is that Azure account with that build identity and four environment variables set. You need to have the AZ CLI, and you need to have the Terraform CLI. Now we're ready to build the code. So the first thing you want to do is go back to the GitHub documentation and navigate to the download this repository section. Copy the git clone command. In your development environment, paste the git clone command. And that is going to download the code and put you in the right directory. So the first thing you want to do is run the check ENV script. This goes through and verifies that you meet all the prerequisites and also verifies that you have all the environment variables necessary to make a connection, and then we actually make a connection. Now we're ready to run the apply. The apply takes about 20 minutes. If you have any questions about this video, please put them down in the comment section and I will answer. The build has completed, so now let's go into the console and take a look at what got built. This project deploys a single resource group. All resources for the SSH key generation service are scoped to this group. Let's first take a look at the Azure Service Bus. It has a single queue named KeyGenResults. This queue receives the SSH key generation request from the API layer. The Service Bus decouples request submission from background processing. The next component is the Azure's Cosmos DB instance, which stores the results. Each SSH key result is stored as a separate item. Items are indexed by a UUID called request ID. Results include the generated key material and metadata. A TTL is applied so results automatically expire after one hour. This ensures all data is temporary and self-cleaning. The core of this project is the Azure Function App, which ties everything together. The Function App contains three functions. The first function is KeyGenPost. This is an HTTP post endpoint. It generates a request UUID and then places a key generation request onto the service bus. The next function is KeyGenWorker. It is triggered automatically by the new service bus message. It generates the SSH key pair and then stores the results in the Cosmos DB container. The third function is KeyGenGet. It is an HTTP GET endpoint. It looks up the results by request ID into the Cosmos DB container, it returns either the completed result or a pending status. The web front end pulls this endpoint until the key is ready. The final component is the lightweight web front end. It is hosted in Azure Storage. It uses a storage account with static website hosting enabled, and it serves a simple UI that submits requests and pulls results.
So for the demo, the first thing you want to do is run the validate script to get the URL of the test application. I'm going to copy that, that into the web browser. And here is the very simple UI. So what we'll do is we'll run it first. I'm going to do the defaults, which is a RSA 2048-bit. Do generate key, and you can watch it. Re requesting key pair is going to get the key ID, and then it's going to poll. Now I'll try it with the, the ed key pair. Uh, generate that. You see it gets the request ID, waits, and then it displays it. Now let's look a little bit underneath the hood. I'm going to hit F12 to bring up the debugger. And the first thing I'll do is go to the JavaScript code that's actually doing the work. You can see it's got step one. It does the post key gen, then it pulls the results, and then it displays the results. Um, so that's the simple JavaScript code that calls our function app with the three endpoints. We can also go to the network tab and we can see the API work as well. You can see it does the key gen request and then it waits. So again, I'll do 2000, 2096, do generate key pair, you'll see it does it and then it waits and then boom. So I can go look at the request here and you can see it's uh, the headers are saying, give me the results for this UID. And the response is pretty much the exact same thing that's in the Dynamo database. It says complete. Then it has um, all the attributes, the request ID, the public key, the private key, the TTL, everything necessary in the Cosmos database to store the results. At this point, we've done everything we're going to do with this project. So now we need to be a good stewards of our cloud account and run the destroy. The destroy takes about 10 minutes to complete.